Today I'm looking at the brand new 2020 MacBook Air, but not just one of them. I have both the Core i3 and the Core i5 versions here to see how they compare, to see which, if any of these, should be your next laptop. Now there are two kinds of people watching this video. The first, love MacBooks and basically will buy them no matter what. And the second group, which generally thinks MacBooks are overrated and a little overpriced. I wanna to talk to that second group first because this new MacBook Air really does address some of those issues and it has a lot to do with price. This 2020 version now starts at just $999 or $899 for students. And that's already $200 cheaper than the MacBook Air that came out in 2018. So right off the bat, you're getting a ton of savings with this new version. Apple now starts the storage at 256 gigabytes, which is double what you were getting two years ago. And it actually costed $200 to make that upgrade at one point. Honestly, it's at the price I wish it had been when it had launched in 2018. And when you compare it to other laptops around $1,000, it really does shine. For example, the screen really is the best laptop display you can get at this price. It's super sharp at 2560 by 1600 and compared to a 1080p screen, you really can see the difference. It's also really high in contrast. Of course, it's not as good as the 13 inch MacBook Pro screen, which is a little more colorful, a little more color accurate, and it's brighter. But again, for this price, it's pretty much unbeatable. The same goes with a couple of really key areas like the build quality, the keyboard and touchpad, and also the speakers. Now the keyboard is easily the most important upgrade here. Apple is using the new Magic Keyboard, which brings back some travel and makes this a reliable computer again that you'll be able to type on for many years without the keyboard giving out. That really couldn't be said of the old butterfly style switches that we saw on previous MacBooks and the previous MacBook Air. But like I said with the 16 inch MacBook Pro when I reviewed it, this really is one of the best typing experiences you can get. The fact that you get a full row of function keys at the top is also a nice benefit for me because I'm not a huge fan of the touch bar. So that's all good stuff. And if you're familiar with Macs, it's not gonna be terribly surprising. But now I wanna address that second group of people, those that love Macs and will just go out and buy this thing no matter what. And there are a lot of people in this camp who maybe own an iPhone and generally prefer Apple products who may not have been paying attention to these last few years in MacBook updates, but they've been full of really controversial things like the keyboard, which was turned out to be pretty faulty, or the touch bar that not a lot of people really found much use for, or the limited port selection, or the throttling performance. There's a bunch of things that Apple has kind of made some sour decisions on that have allowed some room for really great Windows laptops to kind of catch up in areas it was behind in. And these are things that the MacBook Air really used to be dominant in. We're talking about like things like the design. Look at the bezels on the screen just to start off. There's really just no excuse for bezels this large on a laptop in 2020. And the same goes with the portability and the size of this MacBook Air. So as we all know, the original MacBook Air was basically sold on the fact that it was really, really slim, unlike any other laptop we'd seen so far. But these days, a lot of laptops have really caught up to where the MacBook Air is today. And if you look at things like the HP Spectre X360, the Dell XPS 13, or the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, these are all laptops that are both lighter and thinner than the MacBook Air is today. And those laptops do that without giving up really anything in terms of build quality or design. And the same is true of battery life. The original MacBook Air really was a record setter for how much battery you could have in such a small laptop. The MacBook Air would probably last you around six or six and a half hours, depending on your workload, of course, but it may not get you to a full day on a single charge, which some of those other laptops definitely will. And then there's the performance, which is the real kicker and the reason why I wanted to test out both a Core i3 and a Core i5 version because Apple is introducing quad core processors for the first time to the MacBook Air. And this should be a big deal because quad cores really become the standard for Ultrabooks. You know, all of Apple's competitors, including the MacBook Pro, use quad core processors. Unfortunately, there's still a large gap between those other quad core laptops and the Core i5 MacBook Air. We're looking at something like a 20 to 25% 
difference in benchmarks, but also in real life testing, like in video encoding and other heavier applications like that. And that's primarily because Apple is still using a lower powered processor here. It's really in a different class altogether. It's just a nine watt CPU. And compared to those other 25 watt processors, it's really just not gonna be able to compare in terms of performance. So when comparing this Core i5 MacBook Air to some of its competitors, the HP Spectre X360 or the XPS 13 are a couple of my favorites, I do think you're gonna get a better laptop experiences with either of those laptops and a number of other ones in terms of battery life, performance, and even portability. So you should know that going into the consideration of something like a MacBook Air. But here's the thing, if you were really happy with your old MacBook Air and you're looking to upgrade, I think either the Core i3 or Core i5 versions will make you very happy. That Core i3 model, despite it being a little lower powered, is gonna handle all your daily tasks really well. Word processing, web stuff, basic Apple apps, Netflix watching, all that stuff, it will do very well at. And I think that's what the average person who's looking at the MacBook Air is gonna need. But what I wouldn't recommend are some of these higher end, more expensive versions of the MacBook Air. You can go up to Core i7, you can add more RAM, but then you're really getting into the price territory of other laptops that are really powerful, including the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And like I said, there's a pretty big gap in terms of performance between these two laptops. And that doesn't even include the better screen that you get with the MacBook Pro. So what do you do if you need that power, but you don't wanna spend a million dollars on that 16 inch MacBook Pro? I think if you can wait until this rumored 14 inch MacBook Pro comes out, which is gonna replace the 13 inch, I really think that's gonna be worth the wait for the performance you get and the improved keyboard, of course. But what Apple has with this MacBook Air is a really reliable and consistent and solid good option for a budget person or just somebody who's looking to get into the Mac ecosystem for the first time. $1,000, like I said, is a really good value for this type of laptop and with all the extra things that Apple brings that other laptops at this price really can't. 